shepherd that seeks the face of God for the flock of God. And Pastor Matt, I'm honored to sit under you. And I thank you for that. Hallelujah. And also, I want to testify this morning. I'm going to get into my word, but I want to testify. Because God's goodness is good. I looked up here, and I don't know if you know my story a little bit. But Sabrina texted me, and Sabrina, this is my reply back to you. Okay, Sabrina texts me mid-service and says, Angela, your heart must be full. And I don't know if y'all know it, but that's my dad that was playing the bass. And that's my mom. And they just moved here from New Jersey. And Jeff is my boyfriend who was playing the drums. And Naya, of course, long time best friend, minister on the piano. And now we've got a full band, Yvette Danielle. And I'm sorry, but I don't know your name. Shelby. 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 And they're doing an awesome job. Amen. But I'm going to tell you that, let's say, 11 years ago, I, and I'm going to testify to this, I was under a bridge shooting heroin. Right, right. And my mom... Was for my mom put you on the spot. My mom was praying for me yeah. that God would intervene in my life and set me free. Hallelujah. Okay, and my mom was on her face and on her knees watching me travel through this circumstance and situation, and she yeah. never gave up. Hallelujah. And seven years later, Lord. not one year, Lord. not one month, Jeez. seven years yeah. later, I gave my heart to the Lord in Atlanta County. And now, 11 years later, I'm preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. But not only that, my dad is on stage playing the bass. Y'all don't understand. I'm talking about the goodness of God in the land of the living. Some of us have been praying for some th family members. Some of us have been praying for some friends. Some of us have been praying for some breakthroughs. Cry, brother. We're, we're crying people. 
try, I looked at it, and I never been. It's never been so important. Kids, you know, it's never been something that I ever was interested in until I had one, and then, and then still, when that happened, it took a little while to grow on me. But also, that was the love of God, also. And I look how much I don't have control over her life. No matter how much I want to keep her from getting hurt or trying to stop her from going certain places, I know that I can't just keep overprotecting her as much as. When what I'm trying to say is that. What I really need is to show her that God is, you know, and I get on my knees with her every night and I tell her that, you know, even I'm weak. I let her know that I might be her dad and she thinks I'm strong, but I let her know just how weak I am and how much I don't have a control on this. Yeah. And I just want to know, you know, we might not be able to have control over our lives, but we can have a voice and we can say something. And I just pray that I would stop keeping my voice quiet and start using that voice because we can live for God and people can see that. But at the same time, your voice, when you open it, you let God flow through it, and the people can feel it, and the people can receive it. And, you know, I, the biggest thing for me is my family's not here. I've been praying for them for a while, but I keep following myself, and I just want to make this, I just want to be solid on the ground of Christ. I don't want to be getting on this Amen. ride and getting yes. And God knows my heart. That was never the intention. Whenever I gave my heart to Christ, Six years ago, this is what I wanted. This is where I wanted to be. That old me went away. Come on. And sometimes I try to forget my past, and I try not to think about it. But, you know, it's ugly. And just like when Christ went to the cross, it was hard to look at. It's hard to think about until, right. until you get a revelation of how how much love went into that, into that act. You know, you don't realize what he's done for us. And, you know, I, I, I just want that for my family, and I want that for my kids. And I just right. I, I yes. want to give something to them. And. You know, I, I just want that next generation. I do believe that, that generation that comes after us is going to stand up and live for the Lord. Amen. I just Amen. want to know that Come before on. I leave this earth, that I did everything I could to serve God and leave something with my daughter because Amen. that's all I can do. Hallelujah. 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 And that's the heartbeat of the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. And I think that this church right here is a church that wants to stand for Christ. Amen. But, Amen. Brennan, we all weak. Amen. Let me tell you about the hell we've been through the last couple of days. And I told Pastor Matt, I said, look, I know sometimes I come in and I say all hell broke loose. Y'all know we say that. But I'm telling you, last two days, all hell has broken loose. And that's because God is doing something in us yes. and in this church that all hell is trembling at. Yeah, and yeah. and yeah. the enemy wants to stop what God is about to do in this church and in our lives personally. So I, I encourage you. Don't quit. Amen. Don't quit. Don't give up. Don't stop. God's not going to quit on us if we don't quit on him. Amen. He's not going to stop. Hallelujah. Acts 2, 22. You men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him. In the midst of you, and as you yourselves also know, him being delivered by the detriment counsel and foreknowledge of God, you have taken and by the wicked hands have crucified and slain him. This is the verse I want to focus on. Whom God has raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. For David speaketh concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face. For he is at my right hand, and I should not be moved. I shall not be moved. This church shall not be moved. Right. We are going to set the Lord always before us, and we shall not be moved. That's right. Hallelujah. Yeah. What I believe that the Lord wants me to say this morning is birthed out of Peter's message this morning. His message is the inaugural message, and inaugural means marking the beginning of an institution, an activity, or a period of office. When Peter stepped up to give this message, he was instituting the activity and the office of the Holy Ghost. This was the first time that things that Jesus had spoken about on earth 
and the words that he used right before he ascended to heaven, Peter was standing up and he's saying, the institution of the Holy Ghost and the office of the person of the Holy Ghost is about to be instituted right now. It's about to happen. And that was in the, all in the book of Acts. It was a period where the Holy Spirit and his activity was going to be instituted in our lives personally. This is a, a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. He doesn't, look, he doesn't want just his spirit to move and to operate in this church house. He wants you to have his spirit moving in this church house. Hallelujah. So that when we come together, that the move of God is even more powerful than ever before. It starts with our, our own personal relationship with the Lord. That word instituted means the operation of the Holy Spirit within man for power and service was about to be set in motion. Look, the things of God are always moving forward. The motion of faith is always moving forward. He wants to move us forward in our walk with the Lord. By the power of the Holy Ghost, we're not going to stop believing. We're not going to quit. We're not going to throw our hands up. We might fall. We might get back up. We might cry. We might kick and scream. We're going to get back up. And we're going to keep on going. Because you know what the Holy Ghost does? He doesn't let you stay down. That's right. That's right. You want to let your child fall and not run over and pick him or her up and say, are you okay? Let's keep on going. And that's what the Holy Ghost does. He comes to aid, to help. To comfort, to speak, to move, to touch, to deliver, to save. God is on the move and he's on the move in this place. Hallelujah, Jesus. I just want to say this in the book of Acts. It was the operation of the Spirit of God. It was men and women that were broken, that had messed up, that God was going to fill with his Holy Spirit and was going to use for his glory. That's real Christianity. That's touchable Christianity. When I can say, man, I messed up. I blew it. I was not Christ-like. But here I am, Lord. Send me. Yeah. Here I am, Lord. Change me. Here I am, Lord. Touch me. The action of the Holy Spirit in common man <coughs> being expressed to the world in and through us. So I'm going to travel through this real quick. Y'all all know I like the setting of a story. So the setting going on in this chapter right here is the day of Pentecost. Look, it's the day we can get excited because God wants to move in this church by his spirit. And this was being instituted this day on the day of Pentecost. The operation of the spirit of God in believers' lives in a greater measure. I want more. Amen. I'm, I'm not comfortable with just a little bit of That's God. Right. That's right. I'm not comfortable with just a little bit. I don't want the mundane. I don't want just come in here and throw my hands up and go through the steps. I want God to actually yes. move yes. in my life yes. and move in my family and move in my relationships yes. with people yes. and move on the job yes. and move in my children. Yes. I want to see those babies in there worshiping the Lord. Amen. I want to see those babies in there worshiping the Lord. But you know where it starts? Right here in this house. When, when they look at you. Right. When they say, what's grandma doing? Yeah. What's mom doing? What's dad doing? What even though they, they maybe have, are having a hard day, are they pressing into Jesus? Are they allowing the Lord to move in their lives? Well, look, these people right here, they were not giving up for anything. They were holding to the horns of the altar. And we see that right here. Jesus speaks two times of the promise of the Father. Two times of the promise of the Father. Once in the book of Acts and once in Luke. If you could take me there, uh, Emmanuel, Luke 24, verse 49. I want to talk about the promise of the Father. Because that... that is what Pentecost was. God was giving us a promise. And it started in the book of Luke. When it says, behold, I send the promise of my father upon you. But tarry you in the city of Jerusalem. In the city of Patterson. Tarry you in the city of Patterson. In the place where God has you, tarry you, 
until you be endued with power from on high. There is something that we are lacking, church, in the American church, is that we don't, I say we don't know how to tarry with the Lord and wait on him until we be endued with power. There is a tearing that means staying and waiting and pressing and trusting and believing him. We lack that. God, help us. Help us to be a church that reads this word and learns how to sit down, learns how to settle in, learns how to wait in the presence of God. Look, we don't always have to be saying something in the presence of God. I'll be the first to tell you I like to talk. <laughs> Y'all know I'm long-winded. Amen. Amen, Danielle. <laughs> That's a warrior right there, just in case. It, grab yourself a friend that knows how to war with you. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. But grab yourself some friends that know how to tarry with you. Amen. Amen. That want to sit in the presence of God and want to hear his voice yes. and wait yes. on yes. him. That yes. word endued with power, it means to sink in like, a, like you're sinking into a garment. And you know what I, I used to think about? I used to wear my dad's real big before he passed away, eagle shirts. As a little girl, I'll put his eagle shirt on and it would be like down to, to, my, to my ankles and I would be completely covered in this grown man's overgrown eagle shirt. And that's what I was thinking about. When we're endued with power, it's like he covers us and close us and we just got to sing down and settle in to the, to the Lord and to his power. And I was the eagle, come on, he will mount us up on wings like eagles. We will walk and not grow weary. We will run and we shall not faint. He wants to give you power to overcome every obstacle that comes your way. This was the promise of the father from before he came. That the prophets were pointing to Jesus. They were saying there is one to come that is greater than I. And then he shows up and he tells them again, look, there's a promise of the Father that I want you to receive. And I want you to stay in Jerusalem until you receive what I have for you. Amen. Stay there. Stay with your eyes fixed upon the Lord. Robert told me this. I love this. It was so, he's so sweet. Robert's a good man. He was telling me about how he puts, when Elijah or Esther are afraid of something or worried, he puts, I'm going to cry. He puts his face, his forehead up against their forehead. And he looks them in the eyes. And he said, just look at me. It's going to be okay. Sometimes that's what we got to do with the Lord. Put our face right up against his. Because all you can see is the face that's in front of you. Can't see your problem. Can't see the circumstance. Can't see your emotions. You put your face right up against <coughs> the Lord. And he says, Bridget, it's going to be okay. Amen. It's going to be okay. Yes. Amanda, it's going to be okay. I'm going to breathe through. Yes. I'm an on-time God. Oh. <laughs> and I'm going to bring you through right on time. Yes. I'm going to bring you through. Just wait. Just wait right there. <laughs> wait right there. Jesus was saying this before he showed up. He was saying this when he showed up. And then he dies on Calvary. Listen to this. The mission of God was always to die for you and I. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. That was his plan. From the beginning of time, it says in Hebrews 12, 2, looking, just like Robert said, unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who listened to this, for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Hallelujah. It was the joy of the Lord. To die for you and I. That word joy means it was a cheerful delight. That our Savior would endure the cross.
cross, despising the shame that is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. It was his plan to die, to rise again, and to ascend to the Father that we could receive power. He died that we could receive power. What are we doing with that? I challenge myself. Amen. Am I always accessing the power that God purchased on Calvary? That's good. Or am I sitting in my woe is me spirit? <laughs> Preach. Look, I know how to throw a fit, y'all. <laughs> right, Jeff? <laughs> I know, I know how to throw a fit, and I know how to get stuck there. Yeah. But Jesus is saying, yeah. but I died that you could get up. Amen. Listen, there's a song. Look, if you were in the car next to me on the, on the ride here, y'all would have been like, what is that girl doing? She must have been partying last night because she's still going this morning. Because I was playing this song by Maverick City, and it goes, get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave, right? And all I could keep singing was get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Sometimes you have to preach to yourself, right, Shelby? Get up, get up, get up, yes. get up out of that grave. Look, sometimes we just sit on down in the grave, in that place of death that the enemy is trying to take us to. But Jesus is saying, wait up, wait. I died and shed my blood so we could get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get yes. on up. Get up and move forward. Yes. Get on up so your yes. family, right, Brennan, can see the glory of God shining in your life. Yes, yes. I'm sure my mom spent many a nights in that prayer closet weeping over my soul. But then what did she have to do? Get up, get up, get up so that I could see. See, the glory, look, my mom used to make me so mad when I would walk in the house and she would tell me about Jesus. <laughs> I mean, the kid, I shouldn't even have to say anything. That's right. I would walk in and I would be immediately agitated. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and I, but I didn't understand what was going on. And it was the conviction of the Holy Ghost that was all over her life because I was seeing her live Jesus before my eyes. But sometimes I'm sure, Mom, that she probably wanted to quit at times because I wasn't getting it, y'all. I am hard-headed. <laughs> Not me, right? So easy going. We are hard-headed. God, and but God is telling us, look, get up. Get up. Get up out of that sin. Get up out of that anxiety. Get up out of that depression. Get up out of that yeah. battle. Look, we've yeah. been there too long. Yeah. We've been fighting the same old fight too long. Right. Get up by the power of the Holy Ghost Lord. and move forward. Yes, yes. And the things of God that he has for you. Because look, I don't want to stand before the Lord and him say, what did you do with my son? And I say, I don't even, I don't know, Lord. Mm. Mm. I mean, he, I purchased your freedom. I've given you power. I've given you peace. Yes. That yes. peace that people look at you when you're going through a circumstance and they're like, why are you even smiling? Yeah. Because I can get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave mm -hmm. by the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh, yes. I can have joy unspeakable and full of glory in the midst of a circumstance. Yes. The world doesn't understand it. That's right. That's but right. we understand yes. that we can get on up out of that. Yes. We understand That we can get up because of the blood of Jesus Christ Amen. that has been covering us and that he shed on Calvary for us. Yes. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you. He made a way. Yeah. And he made your heart his home. Thank you, Jesus. If, he, if you have said yes to Jesus Christ, he's made your heart his home. Amen. And now he wants to stay there. Amen. He wants to, well, he wants to move on and he's going to move your furniture out of the way. <laughs> he's going to move some paintings off the wall. He's going to turn your music down. Yeah. He's going to shut off your TV. Right. He's going to do all kinds of stuff that you weren't ready for. 
Amen. Get ready. Yes. See, <laughs> Sister Sharon used to preach and she used to say, read the book of Acts and get ready. <laughs> read the book of Acts and get ready. Because when we receive the Lord Jesus Christ, he's about to rearrange your whole house. But get ready because it's going to be a better life like Nia was singing. Amen. It's going to be Amen. a better Amen. life. Amen. Hallelujah. So look, he was preaching about the promise of the Father before he went to the cross, before he died. He, has, he, he came back. Listen to this. Book of Acts. 1 verse 4. Emmanuel, if you could. 1 verse 4. He mentions it a second time. I want to say this. In the mouths of two or three witnesses, let his truth be established. That means that it is able to stand. His truth is being established. So for a second time, y'all have a kid that you got to tell something to twice? Three times, four times? Well, the Holy Ghost is telling his children, thanks mom, his children right now, again. So in case you didn't get it the first time in the book of Luke, we're going to come down to the book of Acts. After he died, after he rose again, he's going to say it again. And being assembled together with them, commanded. All right, look, he's getting strong now. You ever ask your child to do something? And then all of a sudden you come back and now it's a command. Now, if you, don't do, you didn't do it, but I asked you nicely. Now I'm telling you, this needs to be done. So I believe that the Lord is telling his people, commanded them, that they should what? Tarry. That means not to depart from Patterson, but wait, stay, abide, and dwell, endure for the promise of the Father, which he said unto you, which you have heard of me. What was the promise of the Father? I'm going to go through this quickly. One, that you would be saved. Amen. See, there's more than just the baptism with the Holy Ghost in this. The promise of the Father, one, was regeneration. One, that you would be a new creation, that you would be a new creature. That you would surrender to the Lord. And see, he died to purchase, to set us free from sin. That you no longer would walk under the power and the dominion of sin any longer. That's why he died for you and my I. Not so we could just get a ticket to heaven. Say, okay, I'm going to heaven now. I said yes to Jesus. No, he wants a church that is endued with power. That when we see someone at Walmart or on the street, we stop and say, can I pray for you? We can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. We should see those who have been depressed and afflicted healed. We should see the broken mended. Yes. We should see families restored. Yes. We should be walking in the power of Jesus yes. Christ. Yes. You are his body. Free. We are his body. That's right. We are his body. Yes. He is not yes. here in human form. Amen. So we are his body. Oh, it is right. to be endued with power. Yes. It is a command. Yes. It's not a question. That's right. It is not something we should take lightly like should we shouldn't we no it is a command that you stay and you wait and you tarry yes. for this is his promise and he wants to give you power amen. amen so if you question at some point in your walk with the lord why am i not getting victory in this area how long have i been waiting how long have i been enduring let me tell you child of god he is on the move and he is coming your redemption Free. draws near that's yes. what sabrina said yes. draw near Draw near to me. He is calling you. Amen. He is yes, calling yes, you this yes. morning. Glory He's calling you. If you haven't given your heart to the Lord, I want to encourage you. It is the best choice you will ever Amen. make in your entire life. Yes. You want to talk about a life of adventure? See, look, some Christians, I, look, I was one of them. I want to be a Christian. They're boring. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't boring, y'all. Look, they, they, they don't, this is what, they're not cool. They don't party. We know how to have a Holy Ghost filled party. Amen. We know how to, to enter in to the presence of God. Let me tell you about Danielle and I. All right, I train Danielle. Y'all know I'm a personal trainer. And Danielle and I will be lifting, like mid lift, like squatting, okay, on a bar. Heavy. All of a sudden, Danielle's in high worship. In the middle of the gym, y'all, hands up, 
praising Jesus. So I just go in with her. Like, what am I going to do? We're going to enter into the presence of God. When I, in the past, me and my friends would be drinking and we would be, I'm talking about a new life, okay? Stick with me. Because with Danielle, we'll be in high worship all of a sudden speaking in tongues in the middle of the gym, in the middle, and we'll be in. And then all of a sudden I'll turn around to her and I'll be like, okay, squat that again. <laughs> We can have, you can have a good time in the Lord. Amen. That's right. We can have fun in Jesus Christ. That's right. Look, when I see somebody healed, I want to run around this church. Yes. When I see somebody free, I want to jump up and down. When I see a breakthrough happen, I want to weep before the Lord. I have had some of the best times in the presence and the power of God. It's a lie that the enemy will sow and tell you we can't have a good time in Jesus. Amen. It's a lie that the enemy will sow that will tell you that he's got something better for you. That's a lie. That's a lie. Start recognizing the voice that's speaking to you, y'all. God has a better way. So one promise of the Father is a new heart. Listen to the scripture. Ezekiel 36, 25. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you. And you shall be clean Amen. from all of your filthiness. Mm -hmm. From all of your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you. And a new spirit will I put in you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statues, and you shall keep my judgments and do them. Now I preach, be a doer of the word, not just a hearer of the word. And you shall dwell in the land that I give to your fathers, and you shall be my people, and I will be your God. From the moment that you said yes to Jesus Christ, he loosed you from the dominion of sin, from the power of your flesh that wants to rise up and flip. We're not going to be perfect. There are still things he's working in me. Amen. So if you see it, I'm sorry. Because it's there. And if you go home and look in the mirror, it's there too. That's right. But that's why he said, I will cause you to walk in my statutes. That means that in your heart, it's not dead letter any longer. It is engrafted, like Naya said, into the heart of man. That's why when that word flies out of your mouth that you ain't supposed to say, the Holy Ghost says, ooh. Back that up. Right? Naya talked about my mom putting the finger over her lip so we don't say certain things. Or, okay, let's go here. What about the thought you had? About that brother or sister that walked in the church that you knew fell. Lord. Preach. This is a hospital for the broken, Lord. Right. I don't know about you, but we were at the nail salon, and my mom, there was a, a lady that wasn't dressed very modest, and my mom said, Angela, that's what you used to look at, like in church. And I did. I had no shame. Mom, I'm so sorry. But you know what? I pray to God that woman will walk in me. Yeah. 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 Amen. Yes. Amen. I pray to God yes. we could yes. be compassionate towards one another. I remember when I was being raised up in Christ, I would always look at people. Look, yeah, I was a little self-righteous. <laughs> right, Nada? <laughs> and I would look at people and be like, well, she shouldn't be doing that. She's a Christian. She calls herself a Christian. But then I realized, it wasn't based on my performance. Because you know what? The Lord knows how to humble us. Yeah. Same thing you're talking about. That person. Amen. Watch out. Amen. Yeah. That thing coming your way. <laughs> Better get ready. Empowered by the Holy Ghost. God wants to move. He wants to create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. So I want to encourage you this morning that one, the promise of the Father is that you have a born again experience. And that you have a new life in Christ. Two, I'm going to transfer this. The second coming of the Lord. 
Look, the promise of the Father is you will be born again, that you would be endued with power, but that he's coming back. And that we would go with him. Pastor Matt's going to preach on the book of Revelations. I'm going to buckle in and get ready for that. Amen. But the book of Joel says, Joel 2.28, And it shall come to pass that afterwards I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. And your young men shall have visions. That was in the book of Joel. Right. Pointing to the promise of the Father already. Yeah. See, his promise remained the same through the test of time. I'm going to pour out my spirit. Look, we are living in a time period that we can either sit back and let the move of God happen, or you could get in the river and stay in the river and be a part of the move of God. That's right. Amen. Jeff and I were praying last night, and all I could cry out for was revival, but not just state revival, not just world revival. Revive me, yes. oh God. Yes, right. yes, yes. Revive me. You ever been beaten down by the devil so much? You need you need to be revived. Yes, yes, yes. Beaten down by your circumstance so much. God, revive me. Bring me back to life, oh God. Bring my relationship with you back to yes, the preacher. Bring my relationship back to you, oh God. That I would be on fire for you. That I would learn how to stand against hell for you. And you know where that comes from? What Pastor Matt was doing right here. Yeah. Amen. That's right. <laughs> Terry. Yeah. Sitting. Yeah. Waiting. Enduring. Getting up out of that grave and moving forward. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We see Peter given his inaugural message. So now Jesus ascends to heaven, sits down at the right hand of God. And we see in scripture, if you have a question about this, I'm just going to put this out here and you could sit with Jesus. He ascends to the Father, sits down at the right hand. In Acts 2, 1, it says, And when the day of Pentecost, was fully come. They were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house, all the house, all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues of fire, and it sat upon each of their head. And they were filled Oh, wait, wait, wait. All filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So I want to explain to you real quickly. If you have been seeking after the baptism with the Holy Ghost, look, don't leave here not filled. Amen. If you have been seeking for God to refill you, don't leave here not filled. See, he said that they were together. In one accord, waiting and tarrying until they were endued with power. And look, the first time that I heard anybody speak in tongues, it was at where me and I were in ministry, and I called my mother. Y'all ready? Once again, call mama. I said, Mom, I'm in a cult. <laughs> she said, What are you talking about? I said, They're speaking in this weird language. I have no idea what's going on. Get me out of here. <laughs> she said, you could stay or you could go back to jail. <laughs> but you ain't coming here. <laughs> stay up. <now>. Good, huh? <laughs> and I said, okay. So I went back in there and I said, this is really weird. And I sat in that chapel for about two months. I listened to these prayer warriors. Prayer is caught, it's not taught. That's right. That's Pastor Borg saying. I won't take credit for that one. That was a good one, though. But let me tell you something. When you sit in here and you're hearing people pray, and you're hearing people go in, and it kind of feels a little weird to you, maybe you're like, oh, I'm going to need to get out of here. 
Angela's real loud. Sabrina's loud. Danielle's here now. Oh, Lord, watch out. But God is doing something. Yes, yes, he is. And I used to listen to these women pray. Right, right. And that's how I learned to pray. Amen. Yeah. I learned to pray by listening. And then one day, I was like, look, look, I was real, real, real with the Lord. I said, Lord, I don't understand what they're saying. I don't know why they got their hands raised. I don't know why they're running around this chapel. We ain't even got a drummer or a piano. We had, no, listen, we used to sing a cappella. Right, right. 80 people in a little chapel, probably about this big, and would sing a cappella. And touch heaven. Yeah, Ooh, what you mean? You didn't have no drummer, no bass player, no keyboard person. That's because we were hungry. Yeah. Right, right. We wanted God to move and we weren't leaving there until we were endued with power. Yeah. Yes. You, think, you, you think we preach long? Y'all ain't seen nothing until all night prayer meeting with Naya's mother. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I did one of these numbers. I would go down on, on the bench. And be like, I'm praying down here. I fall asleep for like 30 minutes. <laughs> Wake back up, shut that da 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 Right? But you know what? Taught me to endure. Yeah. It taught me to touch heaven. Yeah. 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 Look, sometimes we might be uncomfortable. Y'all think, probably thinking about lunch right now. When is this lady going to stop? <laughs> I'm going to teach you to endure. <laughs> uh, iron sharpens iron, my friend. That's right. No, but you know what? God taught me something in those times. Yeah. And then I said, look, Lord, at this point in my walk with the Lord, the Lord, if somebody would have told me to go gargle peanut butter and stand on my head, I probably would have did it because that's how desperate I was. Right. I just wanted God. I wanted everything he had for me. So then this is what happened. I went in my bed after that. Miss G was like, press in, press in. The Holy Ghost is moving. And I, I didn't get filled. I was like, man, I'm feeling left out. <coughs> I want what they got. Yeah. Whatever they got, if that's for me, I want it. Amen. So yeah. I went in my bedroom and I prayed in my bed until 2 a.m. in the morning. Lord. I lived in a room with 12 other women. Y'all know how I pray. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't care. Yeah. I was like, God, I want it, I want it, I want it, I want it. I want what you got. Whatever it is. I want it, Lord. I don't understand it. I don't even know what it means. I don't know what they're saying. But I know that I know that I know that I feel the presence of God. Yes. And I want it. Yes. And I, I was in the air at 2 a.m. 2 a.m. And all of a sudden the Holy Ghost came over me. And I started speaking in a new tongue. And I stayed there. And I worshiped the Lord forever. And the next day, I'm telling you what, I was clean. And we had to do chores. And they made me clean all the time. And I was clean and shut that out of the And I was walking around speaking in another tongue because I was excited. I was like, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. This is exciting. I was like, Christmas morning. I got it. Come on now. Listen, he said it twice. Now look, if you walk out that door, that's between you and Jesus. But the Holy Ghost won't follow you out that door. Because he made his your heart his home. Amen. I think Pastor Matt, you got filled in the car. Yeah. See? Amen. Ooh, the Holy Ghost on the move. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Peter steps up and he says this. You men of Israel, hear the words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs and God did by him in the midst of you as you yourselves have known. I'm going to say this quickly. Peter, who gave this message, was a man who denied Jesus three times. Peter, God took Peter in his broken, messed up state and condition, in his weakness and his frailty, and said, I'm going to use you. Amen. See, sometimes we tend to, in our natural state, eliminate ourselves. 
God says, I'm not going to eliminate you. I'm going to use you. Yeah. Amen. I'm not going to eliminate you. I'm going to change you. I'm not going to eliminate you for your mistakes and your shortcomings. I am going to use you. And the word of God said, Matthew 16, 18. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter. And upon this rock, who he became a rock for the Lord. I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Yeah. He took a man who denied him when he was going to the cross and said, I'm going to use you. And when Peter stepped up, 3,000 men and women were saved. Yeah. I want to be in that service. Yeah. Yeah. I want to be there. But so many times we look at our frailties, we look at our shortcomings, and Jesus said, no, this is my promise. This is the promise of the Father. I will give you a new heart. I will give you a new spirit. I will baptize you in the Holy Ghost. I will cause you to walk in victory. I will loose you from every pain of death that comes to rob, to kill, and to destroy your life. And I'm going to use you. I'm going to use you for my glory. Peter's life Screams, Christian, don't quit. Yes. Amen. Don't quit. I don't care how painful it is at the moment. Don't quit. Be endued with power. And they gladly received his words. 3,000 souls were saved. Thank you, Jesus. We see a man of denial to a demonstration of the Spirit. A man of denial yeah. to the demonstration of the Spirit. Hallelujah. The word says, you, men of Israel. He was talking to the elite. He was talking to the Jewish people of that day that were supposed to know God. Yeah. Who claimed to know God. And he said, you, men of Israel, hear Give audience, give attention. Y'all ever sit in here and leave and be like, what? I have no idea what the pastor said. Because our minds are just elsewhere. I've been there. I've been there. And I always talking about what we eat next. Because our bellies are ground. But God said, here, give audience, give attention to these words. That's good. Give attention. Are we paying attention to the words of God and what he said? These words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God. He was confirming and documenting who Jesus was. A man who did miracles and wonders and signs in the midst of you. Danielle, you're a miracle, girl. Jen, you are a miracle. Those babies are miracles. <coughs> Alex, you're a miracle. Hallelujah. He did miracles. I want you to remind yourself where you came from. Remind yourself what Jesus has done for you. Remind yourself what he's going to do for you. See, he's working miracles every day. Sometimes we miss it. <coughs> I would have fainted unless I seen the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. He did it in the midst of you. And he said, him being delivered by the detriment counsel and foreknowledge of God, you have taken and by the wicked hands have crucified and slain. He was saying this. This was God's plan all along. He had foreknowledge. The ability to see down the road and what was going to happen. Don't doubt God. He has the ability to see down the road in our lives. We've got to trust him. We've got to believe him. And he's going to see us through to the other side. It was God's plan that he would be crucified and slain. It was God's plan that Peter would be used. See, sin does not come as a surprise to God. That's why he died. 
He died for that sin. Whatever it is, he died for that shortcoming. That's right. He died for that weakness. Yeah. He died for it. He said, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. His foreknowledge, he already knew yeah. you were going to blow it. Amen. <laughs> cool. But sometimes we surprise. We surprise we blow it. And then we think God's surprised right. that we blow it. But God was never surprised Amen. at Peter. And I can tell, and how can I tell you that? Jesus said to Peter, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you sifted as wheat. But I pray for you that your faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen the brethren. That means that he was going, Jesus knew that down the road, Peter was going to deny him. He also said, I pray, not that you don't fail, but that your faith doesn't fail. Because you're going to fail. Get it in your heart. I'm going to mess up. Don't use it as a license to mess up. Don't go there. But no, it's probably going to happen. And you know what? Your faith, I set the Lord always before me. Because when your faith is upon the Lord, the Holy Spirit now has access to move in your heart and to change you. Amen. And Amen. to change me. That's good. Amen. He didn't, it did not come to a surprise. That word converted means when you look back. See, Peter began to look at his circumstance and got fearful and denied the Lord. But when you look back to him, he will change. The, the word means to change your form. Mm, come on. Converted yeah. means your form, the form of your heart is yeah. going to yeah. be changed. The way that we think is going to be changed. Oh. The way that we approach circumstances and situations are going to be changed. Jesus is looking to loose some people this morning of some things that we have been struggling with, some things that we've had weaknesses in. And he said, I pray that your faith doesn't fail. I want to convert you. I want to change you. Amen. And then he said, but look, Danielle, I'm going to change you, but go strengthen the brethren. Don't sit down in the back pew and not do anything. That's good. Amen. Don't go on the job and keep your mouth closed. That's right. Don't go see somebody struggle and go gossip about them. That's right. That's good. Find yourself on your face for that person, for Amen. that circumstance. Amen. Say, God, change me and help me help them. Strengthen yes. the Amen. brother. Sometimes the best thing y'all can do for each other is pray. That's right. Amen. Amen. Because then the Holy Ghost has time to move. Hallelujah, Jesus. Converted, strengthened the brethren. And that's exactly what Peter did. He denied him. Then he shows up on the scene. And he charges the people of God. These men leap of God. And says, look, you crucified him, but he's about to loose you. You put him on the cross, but he's about to loose you. That's right. That's right. Who God has raised up. Let's look at that. For the people that put him on the cross, he was ready to loose them of everything that they were struggling with. So that's just condemnation and the devil telling you that you can't be loose from the things that we've been struggling with. Because he said, look, you did it, but Jesus seen it and he died anyway. Right, right. That's his heartbeat for you. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Whom God has raised up having loosed the pains of death because it was not possible that he could be held of it. Hallelujah. That word loose means to break up, to destroy, to dissolve, to loose, to melt away, to put off. God wants to melt away some of those things in your heart that have been bothering you. Some of those battles in your mind that you have been struggling with in your body that you have been dealing with. He wants to loose you. He wants to destroy every tactic, every scheme that the enemy has put before you. Every obstacle, every stronghold that he has risen up in your life, in your family's life, in your children's life. Today is the day that he wants to loose us 
and set us free. And how do I know that? Because when you've given your heart to the Lord, you are justified. You are not guilty any longer. That means that no matter what you have done, you are not guilty. Even yesterday or this morning, you are still, when you look unto Jesus, not guilty any longer. And he wants to continue to work on us continuously and loose the grip of things in our lives that have been producing death. Things that, that, that word pain means sorrow or travail. Things that have been trying to bind you. Come here, Pastor Matt. I'm going to close with this night. <laughs> no, sir. Yeah, you want to? Yeah, we could, but it's slow. That's good. It's a slow Come thing. Come on up, ask the man. I'll do whatever you right want here. me to do. Spin around. How long? All right. Spin. So the enemy is always trying to bind us. Okay? Fear, pride, anxiety, depression, right, right. lust, superfluity of naughtiness. Now I appreciate on that. If y'all didn't hear it, you're missing it. <laughs> right? Things that we say. Covetousness. Anger. There are things that are constantly trying to bind us up. Right, even yeah. the pastor. Right, right. But uh, God said yes, that yes. he was going to loose mm. us. Mm. <laughs> Thank you. 